One way I see ageism in society today would be in the workplace. As far as getting a job, um, younger people are more apt to get the job because they can be paid less if they're coming right out of college. Uh, rather than older people who have worked for a long time who expect to get paid more. And um, as far as specific jobs, um, younger people are perceived as like better with technology or certain things like that. Or older people might be perceived as better with handling people or anything along those lines. And then some people lose their job as they get older because they're not as effective and after you stay at a job for a while, you expect to get paid more. So they'll try to get new people in to uh, replace you that they can rely on. I've seen it um, with my younger siblings. They um, get away with a lot of things that I don't. And they get to do more things because they're younger. They treat them more with care, you can say. Um, like on um, one day, my little brother, he stole a bag of pennies from his teacher and he didn't get in trouble for it. Um, they would just pass it off because he was young. They thought, oh, maybe um, he didn't know what he was doing. He was a little. Um, but I thought maybe if he was my other brother that was a little bit older, he would have gotten into more trouble because he was a teenager. Um, so yeah, and also one day when I was um, walking on the street with my younger brother, um, someone asked me if um, that was my son, just because I was a teen and I was with a kid, they assumed that he was my son. The way I've seen ageism in society today is through, through sports. Oftentimes the captain is picked by the coach and it's always like a senior or an upperclassman and oftentimes this isn't necessarily the correct choice based off leadership status it's just based off the age and how he's been through the program and one example was back in high school on our basketball team it was our sophomore year and there was only one senior on the team and he wasn't a very good leader um, on and off the court on the court, he like said the right things, so coach thought he was a good leader, but off the court, uh, he would do all kinds of um, bad actions toward his own teammates and towards other classmates. Um, and it ended up spiraling into a big thing where uh, the players on our high school team, actually three of them quit, um, who played significant minutes. And it ended up where we had a pretty underachieving year based off the leadership of that one senior. So one of the ways I've seen ageism in my life is uh, with older people viewing younger people as untrustworthy or even as delinquents. And so one way I've seen this personally is I've walked into stores before and then as I'm like browsing around, I notice that uh, someone working at the store will like purposely walk by whatever aisle I'm in and like, kind of like spy on me in a way to make sure I'm not doing anything and I'm not gonna do anything wrong. It, it's like kind of frustrating that they would just assume because of my age that they would uh, assume that I'm gonna do something wrong. Or one time I was sitting on a bench with my friends outside and we were just waiting around for a little bit and a cop actually came up to us and started asking us what we were doing and why we were there. Not because we looked suspicious or anything, just because of our age, he just assumed that it must be up to no good. One of the most visible ways I've seen ageism in our society today is through these 55 plus retirement housing communities. And it's, I guess the story starts with my grandmother who at the time was 54. And, uh, and we were always really close. She lived in Oklahoma and she lived about 20 minutes away from where our family lived with our grandfather. And then one day, just out of the blue, our, they went and our grandparents were just running their usual route at the park and my grandfather had a heart attack and then a day later he passed away. And so now my 
grandmother was left in this big house that she had no need to stay in their big house for, uh, and she couldn't afford it anymore. So she was gonna move into a smaller house, and so we saw these retirement homes around the corner from where we lived, and we talked to people and they said that they could only have 20% of the people under the age of 55 living there, and they'd already exceeded the 20%. So they basically denied my grandmother's uh, approval to live in those retirement homes. While negative portrayals and messages of aging are common when marketers and media address the older market, most of the time this population is practically invisible to them. Only 5% of the marketing dollar are spent on individuals over the age of 50. Together with lack of inclusive, appropriate products, this neglect can make older consumers feel irrelevant, even though they have money to spend. You know, with coaching, they want um, coaches to be experienced. I think a lot of times the assumption is if you're if you're young, you don't have as much experience, so then they'll kind of overlook um, maybe some of your qualifications um, and just look past you, just depending on your age. Then, a general, you know, in our general culture, I think that and a lot of times experience is preferred, or you, know, you look at you know, job descriptions, masters preferred, you know bachelor's required or it's you know, five years experience for this or that and I think you know a lot of times people in, in higher levels of jobs or higher opportunity or you know better opportunities so to speak you know are looking for people with more experience when the reality is maybe the best person for the job because of education or because of resources may be someone that's younger um, a little bit more talented that it's been off it's been and that's experienced you know more resources that they've gone on maybe the best fit for the job but I think you know some of the people in higher Physicians see experience and, and age maybe as a uh, preference over you know someone younger that's a little more talented. It's just the way it has been for a long time, and I think you know people use the the term millennials now, and I think as as people you know graduate with 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 more resources and opportunities and a little bit better education. You know, maybe that, that started that concept and, and that stereotype starting to change. But I think at the end of the day, people like to go with what's comfortable. And what's comfortable is the person who's been in the business for 20 years. Or what's comfortable is the person who's experienced, you know, things for X amount, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I think, I think that's the reason why it is. It just, it's just comfortable. It's the way it has been. But I think as, as time goes on, I think that may start changing and evolving as you look at younger coaches or younger professionals, younger CEOs, younger managers, you know, I think that stereotype is starting to slowly evolve and change and be more even. I think because a lot of times, you know, we see these silly clips or whatever and people are out there kind of giving the younger generation a bad, a bad rap. So maybe sometimes they just are assuming all millennials are, you know, not working hard or not um, putting in the effort to make, to advance in their career. I think by young, and I'll use the word millennials again, proving themselves in the, in the work field, you know, if a young, the young person from, you know, I'll say MIT or Harvard, you know, being successful or, you know, people that are younger excelling in a CEO role or excelling as a manager or excelling as a coach, I think in, in any of those fields, if, you know, the young person can excel and see positive results um, from a business perspective or from in the workforce, I think, you know, results speak, you know, stats speak, facts speak. So I think as younger um, individuals thrive and do well in that environment and in that aspect I think that stereotype will, will like I said will start to fade and I think um, you'll see uh, more younger people um, you know, getting opportunities that, that might not have been afforded to them in the past. Um, I think that I've just been um, persistent in getting my licensing because um, and, and gaining more experience because that's the only way that I can kind of push past people looking at me and saying Oh, she's young, she has no experience. If I gain the experience, then they can't say I have no experience.